As climate change takes its toll on the Arctic, Interact is bringing together scientists and indigenous peoples to figure out the challenges ahead. An important part of that is monitoring the rise of extreme events. They now endanger this frozen land, its ecosystems and the people who live there. In 2017, an Arctic tsunami hit Greenland. A wave reaching nearly 100 metres high travels across Karat Fjord at deadly speed, straight towards the fishing village of Nugatsiak. Unfortunately, the, the, the inhabitants didn't have time to react, especially that, that wave hit the village um, late in the evening. It was a long day for the local inhabitants working in the, in the harsh environment. They were probably putting kids to, the, to bed and you know, just starting to prepare for sleep. The wave swept over the village, killing four people. <laughs> Dr. Sprizlecki was one of the scientists sent to assess the damage. We've been working in, in Nugatsiak uh, for a couple of days, um, trying to uh, locate the, the, the cabins, the buildings. 48% of the settlement infrastructure was, was, was destroyed. The 22 cabins or, or huts were swept by, by waves to, 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 to the fjord. Arctic tsunamis might sound like freak events, but their danger is increasing. The 2017 disaster was caused by masses of rock falling into the fjord after a landslide. And these landslides could become more likely as permafrost thaws in the rock. We have approximately 560, even 600 areas where the landslides are already creeping down the slope or they are in an active phase and they are capable of reaching the, the, the shorelines. For thousands of years, ice has been the bones supporting this frozen landscape. An icy skeleton that is melting. As glaciers and permafrost disappear around the Arctic coastline, Vulnerable rock is becoming unstable. Disasters waiting to happen. We, we would say there are new, uh, new monsters in the Arctic. These waves can have a magnitude that sets them apart from other tsunamis. It can reach not only dozens of meters, but I would say we have examples and we have proofs and evidence from sites in Alaska and Greenland where those waves grow to 100, 200, even 500 meters. So they are really monstrous. We call them mega tsunamis. As climate change accelerates, scientists are now racing to find other areas from Alaska to Norway that are most at risk. So we can say that we are partly working as a, a big wave or tsunami hunters in the Arctic. Across the Arctic, scientists are researching the structure of the rocky coastlines to find out how badly they are destabilizing. So uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's, our, that's our work now. For the Karait Fjord, surveys have shown that the area remains unsafe. The threat of yet another tsunami means that it is still too dangerous for the town's inhabitants to return. That small community, community of Nugatsiak, is, is crucial for the future yeah, because uh, unfortunately, from their strategy, others can learn how to adapt for the uh, more and more dangerous future. In that future, it's not just tsunamis that communities will have to contend with. Although Arctic landscapes seem stable, even unchanging from the outside, as the Arctic warms, extreme events, including avalanches, floods, fires, and abrupt permafrost thaws, have all increased. For the worst types of events, that impact can be incredibly severe. So, for instance, with things like a tundra fire, it can remove uh, all the plant biomass and even uh, burn off some of the soil below the plant. So that's, you know, a complete almost removal of lots of the ecosystem. These events are linked to global climate change uh, because the warming is creating conditions uh, that allow them to happen more and more often. So, 
For instance, with fire, a change in climate can create a drier ground and an increased frequency of lightning strikes that can uh, cause the fire to start. But it's not always the most dramatic extreme events that cause the most harm. Rain might seem gentle, harmless even, but on unusually warm days in winter, it can change the Arctic landscape in a drastic way. When the rain falls on the snow surface, uh, then if it refreezes after that, it's only the top layer of snow which actually gets wet. And then when the temperature goes back down to minus 30 or 40, it becomes a hard crust. The ice forms a barrier that stops animals from getting through the snow. I was in the north of Yamal, and there had been a rain on snow event. The ice crust meant that the lemmings couldn't get above the snow. Eventually, when they couldn't get out, they ran out of food. So um, when the spring came, we saw a lot of dead lemmings. We saw all the nests and just devastation. But that's what happens when the lemmings get, it's like being sealed inside a cave. It's not just the animals under the ice who suffer. Predators who rely on the lemmings struggle to find food. And for large herbivores, the picture can be even bleaker. The lichen that reindeer need to survive the winter becomes trapped under the ice that can be too thick to break through. But these icy barriers are not the only problem. With extreme warm spells, the snowpack can melt completely. And when the meltwater refreezes, it encases plants in ice, which can kill them. All these plants dying at once has ripple effects on the whole ecosystem. Whether through freeze damage or ice layers in the snow, the consequence is that the plants that so many animals depend on are becoming unavailable or damaged. And for some species, the impacts are already being felt. There's some grim imagery of the reindeer freezing, um, huddled together for warmth and starving at the same time, so it's not, it's not a nice uh, way to go. About 20,000 reindeer starved to death after a rain on snow event in Russia in 2006. Then, in the winter of 2013, another 61,000 reindeer died in the same region, causing huge suffering among Nenet nomadic herders who rely on these animals for food. The number of carcasses was so large that it drew red foxes and other southern scavengers into the tundra. The red fox is considered one of the main threats to the Arctic fox in this region. But the knock-on effects of reindeer death go much further. Many cultures depend on it, so it's probably one of the most important species that is affected by rain on snow because it has direct implications for people's culture, food, clothing, uh, bedding, even companionship. People get attached to their animals, so it's a pretty wrenching event to see them starve en masse. For Sami indigenous communities in Scandinavia, Rain on snow events, as well as midwinter thaws, could threaten a whole way of life. Uh, the reindeer is the backbone of the entire Sami culture. It's like a family member. We also get our, our food from it, the meat from the reindeer. It's everything for us. As Arctic winters become warmer, rain on snow events and midwinter thaws are likely to increase. Since I've started, I've been a full-time reindeer herder for 23 years and I had more problematic winters than normal winters during that period and we see that it gets only worse and worse. When I started herding the reindeers I, I could call home to my father and ask what shall I do now? This thing occurred with the weather or this kind of snow and he always had an answer. But now this is so new and everything is going so fast so, so even the older generations they don't know how to act and react so a big part of our traditional knowledge is um, changing at least. And I'm also scared that if it continues like this and if our lands are grabbed away by other land users extractive industries and, and stuff like that the reindeer husbandry will disappear in, in, in the future. As extreme events happen more often and the frozen parts of our world change, it's challenging for local communities simply to keep up. These events are by nature difficult to predict, making it hard for scientists to be in the right place at the right time to observe them.
You can almost have death by a thousand pinpricks where you've got a lot going on in lots of locations that, that as a whole contribute to a big impact. The pace of change is quite sobering uh, and when you witness uh, some of these extreme events it really does kind of hit you in a personal way uh, and I think uh, what we mustn't do is give up hope because of that actually the key thing to really focus on is focusing on stopping climate change because stopping climate change will mean we can stop the harm happening not just to the Arctic but all over the world.